Um, about myself, I was born in a small town in uh, California called Bakersfield, um, and I have always loved photography. And around the age of 13, my dad kind of saw this like budding artist inside of me, and so I decided I had to be a photographer, and it was it was my passion, my dream, and I just had to make it happen. Um, and I. I kept shooting and I gradually got to a place where I felt like I wanted to go to art school and around the age of 18 I went to, I, I left Bakersfield where I grew up and I moved to Los Angeles and I've been here ever since and it's now 2017, I moved here in 2010 and I'm basically, I'm, I feel really lucky to be able to do what I do. Okay, so this is a shoot I just uh, shot yesterday, actually. Um, this is a girl, a model named Angelina Jessen, and she is with Freedom Models in LA. Um, and I actually, I am so psyched on this shoot, just um, honestly, because I don't shoot a lot in studio, and I wanted to challenge myself and do something that is a little outside of my comfort zone, because I primarily shoot on location, and that's where I feel the most comfortable, just being outside where there's like freedom and uh, space to to breathe. Um, but this actually, I conquered like a fear and I conquered, um, you know, like second guessing myself. And I think that I walked away from this shoot feeling really, really proud of myself and just psyched on the work I was able to create with such an amazing team. And I worked with them, um, an amazing uh, stylist named Star Burley and her assistant, Megan Johnson, and then um, Harriet Hadfield um, on makeup, and Ashley Lynn Hall on hair, and then I also had an amazing production team helping me named um, Goldie Productions based in LA. Um, and this was just, oh wait, this was primarily just a test, um, but and saying that I feel like it's got to be much more and I kind of want to submit somewhere for an editorial and I'm just overall super pleased with it. Um, and this one is a woman named Tashi Rodriguez. She's an insanely beautiful woman, like kind of out of this world. She is so stunning. Um, she's based in LA. I want to say she's with DT management. Um, but she's just gorgeous. She's got these freckles and this skin tone and this kinky curly hair, like curls. And we just like had a little day where we hung out and tried to find some places that we found inspiring together and tried to just make some shit happen. And that's kind of how that went. And obviously she's I'm obsessed with her really. Her eyes are insane. So stunning. Um, there she is again. You're just like, there's so many girls here in LA now that are so interesting. And I think overall in the industry, it's it's really changing and there's not um, just one type of look anymore. It's become really unique. And there's just like this woman, for example, there's just so much more to being a model these days than there used to be. And I think it's really interesting that there's just such a, such a place for people who are very unique looking compared to how it used to be. Um, this woman Raven with Freedom as well, actually, I don't know if you guys can see on screen, it says my body, my choice behind her. Um, this was shot on film up in a place uh, called Solstice Canyon in Malibu. And I just took her on a hike just to take some photos. And we ended up finding this little weird nook that had some graffiti and the like somebody wrote at one point my body my choice and this was kind of this was last year when all of the political drama was happening with um you know who and then uh it just it was like so so like heartfelt and emotional that i was just like dude you have to take off your clothes and go sit in front of that and i'm so i'm so glad i did i almost just cussed i don't want to be rude but it's it's just, I don't know, there's something about it and I feel like I'm gonna cherish this photo forever. This, this isn't super new. I don't know when we last talked, if I had shot this, but I shot this last year um, on a little camping trip with some friends and my fiance. 
and uh, we went on this hike and it was blazing hot, but our friend Nellie, her name is Nellie Anderson, um, she was wearing this beautiful fur coat and she just decided to jump across this um, rock formation and I luckily shot it at the right time and I instantly knew it was a photo that I wanted to use and um, I'm just, I gravitate towards these photos all the time. I don't know, you probably have seen photos like this in a lot of my work or my website um, with people running away from me. There's something, there's something just like so cinematic to me that I, I find it really beautiful. Um, and I just love the way her shadow is falling on the rock and her shoes she's holding. This one is of a woman named Maxine Woodring with Vision based here in LA. Um, and she, she's great. She's so beautiful. My, my fiance actually just shot with her too. And we both are obsessed with her look and her eyes and just the way she carries herself. She's just a gorgeous, gorgeous girl. Um, I shot this one with her in Topanga. Um, I wanna say last year as well. I just took her on a hike and it was actually surprisingly a super bright sunny day. I don't think you can really tell by this photo because I, I edited it um, kind of dark and I crunched the blacks and made them a little bit red. Um, but I had her just lay in this uh, this little, what is that, like a wheat, little wheat patch, just like dry dead leaves. Um, but I don't know, there's something about it, just the way her body is shaped, the, the graphic line of her leg and her knee and then her hand covering her eye. Um, I just find it really interesting. This is Maxine as well. This one is super, super old actually. I haven't used this photo a lot. I think I shot this in 2012 maybe or 2013, um, but and saying that, I think it's a really beautiful photo and I've been using it on my website recently compared to never using it before. Um, I just love the colors. I love the shadow on the wall. I shot this one with some friends. I think this was when Maxine hadn't really even shot any photographs. Um, like I hadn't tested at all. I think she maybe was 16, 15 or 16. And um, so it was like, her first shoot, she was really fresh. I was super young too, um, but it was it was a good one, and I'm I'm grateful that I've I've been able to keep in touch with her over the years. And like this this photo just happened. It wasn't like I planned this or tried to set this up to a certain degree. I just drove around with some girls and. I was like, oh, that house is beautiful. Let's go shoot that. And it just happened within a matter of like 20 to 30 minutes. This one is of a boy named Max, Maxwell Runko. He is a really good friend of mine. Um, this I want to say is shot in Malibu. As you can tell, I kind of shoot, I shoot a lot outdoors in Malibu or Topanga. <laughs> um, and this one, I don't know, we were just like on a little friend hike. It wasn't a photo shoot. And then it actually, his hair is kind of wet in the photo because he was like trying to get into a creek prior to this image. And he's laying down in a disgusting, nasty creek. And then we all were walking back to the car and the sky was really pretty and I just snapped it. Like again, it wasn't really planned, it just happened. This one, this lady is Melina DeMarco. She is a She's a model, she lives in New York, um, and I shoot with her a lot for the line that she's wearing called Lively. And they are one of my favorite clients. They, uh, they make bras and undies and swimwear and now activewear. I shoot for them about, I wanna say, like five times a year, usually in New York, but recently we did Miami. Um, and they are, they're just such great girls. They really, um, I don't know, they make really cool garments and lingerie, well, they call it intimates. Um, and they're body positive, they're trying to empower women and they're like the anti Victoria's Secret, which I find really refreshing. Um, we shot this super early morning in, um, in the Hamptons, like in Montauk area in New York and it was freezing cold. I think it, it was March or April um, and this girl's a trooper. It was 
so cold. I don't even think she could feel her feet at a certain point. Um, I don't know. She's just a hard worker, and it was a really beautiful moment. Her and I have an energy that just doesn't really like compare to anybody else. Like same with this one. She just moves in such a way. She knows what I'm trying to capture, and there is this like unspoken just this unspoken thing between us that like I can't really describe. I can't put it into words. She just knows how to read me and knows how to read my emotions and I know how to read her emotions and we do this little dance together and it's funny like my fiance Arthur X on these shoots for me and it's so great and he always tells us tells us how like how beautiful it is and I don't really realize it's happening sometimes and then you just like stop for a second and you're just like what the hell is happening um but it's just one of those things where it's like it's this energy that you can't really describe it so much but you can feel it you know this one i'm sure if you've looked at my website you've seen it before this is of a lady named lauren holmquist um she is by far one of my favorite people to shoot um she is just just so stunning and so inspiring and the way she moves is a lot like Melina, the girl I was just showing you. Um, she she can literally just I make me like just stop and go like what like well, how are you doing that? Like you don't you don't have no inhibitions. The thing that, that is so amazing about Lauren is that she just doesn't care and she just moves and she'll do this and then I'm able to capture it and it's this it's so crazy. She's got such, just such a beautiful soul and it translates to how she moves in photographs. I don't even think she's modeling anymore, but she really should. And I really, really wish I could shoot her again. Um, and this, this happened um, kind of like organically, like a lot of the other images I have in here. It's, it just happened on like a little adventure where we kind of don't have a lot of plans, but she brings some clothes and we just talk and hang out and then just like magic happens and these little sparks and um, yeah, it's just, it's all very organic. Same with this. Um, this is a woman named Kara Lynn. Um, she is a model. But she's also a jewelry designer and she has lived in LA for a bit. I met her, I'm trying to remember. I met her like maybe six or seven years ago um and we uh we just really clicked and one day she asked if i wanted to come over and it was a day right after it had rained um and there were all these crazy puddles on the ground and instead of actually shooting her and her face and her outfit i was like oh wait no let's like look at these these cool reflections happening on the ground because there's these beautiful puddles and it was really sunny um and that's how this happened and I, it's so haunting but it's it's really beautiful i say haunting because i think her hands look like kind of creepy but that's like my favorite part about it i um i think it's uh, i don't know there's something about it this one this woman's name is cayman um she is a gorgeous model um based here in la also and this one I mean, I feel like this is the same story with almost every single one of my images. It's all organic, it happens naturally, and I don't really plan a lot of it. And I feel like when I plan too much, it almost like hinders the work. Um, like if I try to control every little last bit, it makes it almost become less fun to me. And then that just like, that just creates this weird uh, like block in my head when I'm shooting. I feel like whenever I am really loose and free about things, that's when the magic happens. And that's when I can really release uh, some energy or I like find these moments in between like this one where she just happened to throw her hand up and like shake her hair. And I just compose it in a way that I really liked. And I think it's gorgeous. And that was one of my favorite photos that I've taken in the last year. This one isn't so new. This is, um, Brooke Nesbitt, I shot this like a couple years ago. You've probably seen it if you looked at my portrait section recently. Um, but I, what I love about it is how her hair is covering one eye and kind of makes it look green compared to blue. Um, but yeah, I love her freckles. So pretty. 
This one is an editorial I shot last year. It's a beauty editorial um, for Bello magazine uh, with amazing models, Zarina Nairs. Um, I shot this at my good friend's vintage shop in Topanga called Dust and Fog. Um, and I had like a really dope all girl crew and we just kind of, like I said, like made some magic happen and yeah, it was a fairly mellow shoot. I think this happened over the course of like five hours, but um, just we were able to get such good stuff because Zarina is so stunning and she's really, really good at what she does. She's also an amazing jazz singer as well. Here she is again. I love this one. This one has to be my favorite. I think this is um, just, I don't know, there's something about the lens flare that changes the composition with like the tie on her neck, how it kind of just goes straight through. Um, and then honestly with this, I just put up a little white, a white um, backdrop and the sun was setting behind us so or sorry in front of me behind Zarina so that's what created the lens flare this one is Annie McGinty um, she is an absolute babe she uh, she decided she wanted to ride um, her skateboard without pants on in this little alley in Venice and I said sure why not and that's how that happened um, and yeah, I just, we're kind of just having fun, but I feel like I'm just going to keep saying this for every photo. It's like, we just had some fun. Like we, we tried to make something cool and we were able to, and I think that's kind of it. I mean, I feel like when you've got people that know how to read each other and know like what the end goal is, and we also know how to communicate really well. Um, there's always going to be some sort of magic. I think I prefer this one a little bit more. Um, this is just a black and white version. I, I prefer the no face. I also like the composition of it a little bit better. Um, but yeah, I think those were within a couple seconds of each other. This one I shot on a campaign recently in, earlier in the year for Element Women's. Um, this model is Jade. Uh, I think her last name is McDaniel. Um, but this one happened in a little alleyway in Santa Ana. It was kind of the end of the end of the day, and we were just trying to get our last couple shots in. And it was on a two-day shoot, and the art director told me to try this little vantage point above the alley because there was like this little staircase with like a bridge where you could kind of see over and down. Um, and we had Jade do a couple of, um, what do, I don't know what you call this, but she just rode a skateboard through that one area directly underneath me. And this was the, the frame that I liked the most um, just because of the composition, the, the lines are going so nicely and I love the stripes on her sock. I love the color blocking. It's just, it's like a perfect image to me. I'm really proud of it and super happy with it. Um, and I think, I don't know, I think it's really, really, I think it's really pretty. I'm very happy with it. This is the same campaign. Um, and this shoe, I kind of had to do like a little bit bare bones because we just had to like run on the fly. We didn't have permits, which is always tough. Um, and so I had to just kind of like find these different angles. And this one, I, I, um, I want to say I was shooting on like a 24 to 70 and I, she was riding her skateboard through the alleyway and I was just looking up at her and, um, just captured this moment. Um, but it was pretty organic. I love this one though, it's one of my favorites. This is a little sneak peek of a shoot I did recently um, with an art director named Gallus Slater. This is uh, titled Windows of Opportunity. I can't show you any of the fashion because it's not been released yet, but this is just actually a really tight crop of an entire image. Um, and this is Emma McKee with uh, Vision LA. 
and our shoot is going to be so insane when all of it comes out. I'm super excited. It's lots of like pastels and sequins and um, silks and just gorgeous, gorgeous styling by um, Star Burley. And yeah, I just, I'm so stoked on this. I can't even describe to you. I cannot wait for it to come out. This I shot recently in New York, um, in Chinatown to be exact, with Amelia Zadro. Um, I think I was there last month and her and I wanted to get together in LA, but it just never happened. So we decided let's do a little mini shoot in Chinatown and see what we can do. Um, and my good friend told me an area where to go and like he told me exact cross streets and so I met her there and it was stunning it was beautiful there was like this gorgeous red wall and then there's so many people and Chinatown is just like so overwhelming I mean New York in itself is very overwhelming but Chinatown especially because there's so much happening um and her and I just walked around and uh she sat on a railing and I um I shot some of her like straight on but it just didn't really make sense to me so I tried to just go over to the left of her and like hide half of her face with this doorway um and i think it i think it really turned out well this is kind of near chinatown the same shoot with amelia zadro this one i am obsessed with i love this photo this is amelia's jacket an acne jacket i want to say I'm not sure of the, the area this is in, but it's right next to Chinatown. I think it's like the Manhattan Bridge or something. But it's in New York, and her and I, like I said, for a lot of these shoots, we just like hung out. We had really loose plans, and we just kind of like like combined minds and tried to make some shit happen. Same Same little shoot. I think it happened over the course of like, two hours if that but yeah i love reflections as you can tell this is amelia jumping on that red wall that i was talking about um and i love this one i love the shadow i love the shape of her coat um but basically like how this happened was i told her hey can you jump across this one area i want to see what it looks like and so I had her do it a couple of times without me shooting, just so I'm like, oh, okay, that looks good. And then shoot it again, again, and again. And then I, I kept shooting, I kept shooting. And then I eventually, I was like, oh, no, I already got that, like, pretty much the first time you did it. But I just kept shooting because I, I have this terrible fear that I'm going to miss something when I'm shooting, which is annoying, but it's just how I operate. This one I shot on the Element campaign of Jade and Jessica Morrow on the left. Yeah, I love people running away from me. Um, but this one, I think, was on the first day. I think it was on the first day, and we just kind of were running around trying to, like, create these moments of, like, energy and happiness and, like, some freedom. And I want to say this was in Santa Ana in California. This is Nicole. I think her last name is Chanel. Um, she's with Vision. And... She actually hadn't been modeling for very long when we did this photo shoot. And I just took her around my neighborhood because um, I live in this area with these gorgeous um, textures and walls nearby. And she is so stunning and has like the be most beautiful skin tone. Um, and actually for her not even modeling for very long, I think she had maybe done a couple of test shoots beforehand. Um, she photographed really well. Sink girl. I love this um this jumping vibe I always have. I'm like really attracted to movement and jumping and like these free moments where you like lose yourself. There's something about it. Um love this one. This was on like a really beautiful pink wall nearby, um, near my house. And I just am obsessed. I love this one too. Actually, this was one of my favorites from that shoot. I love her energy. I love her smile. Um, I think what sparked this moment was me just like talking to her because I feel like that's a huge part of my work is talking people through um, 
the moments because sometimes it's uncomfortable to get your photograph taken and like if you can make people laugh and like giggle and get some of that weirdness or, or weird energy out then it's it's like a really good thing um yeah i just love that moment this is a woman named sarah cummings um i actually shot this a long time ago in 2013 i want to say but just recently I re-edited some work and I found this image and I had never done anything with it before. Um, and I just love it. I, there's something about the like, the deepness and darkness and the richness of all the blacks and her freckles. Her freckles are insane. This one, it might not be appropriate for some people, but I shot this a couple years ago and I'm obsessed with it and I will move on because I don't want to be rude. Um, this one, this is of a, a boy named Zane Peck. Um, this is a little older too, but I'm not sure if I talked about it last time I had the little podcast thingy. Um, but he, this photo happened just because I told him to jump over this fence and I shot it and we kind of got it like straight away. Um, but yeah, it was very organic and we were shooting around this neighborhood in Highland Park and I just said, Hey, go do that. And then he's like, okay. <laughs> this of the name but there was this place with these crazy flowers um and i took her up there and we had such a good time and it was the first time we had really met but we talked and talked about life and just everything and these flowers just blew my mind they're, just, they're so pretty they're so 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 pretty and those two are on film and this is Caroline Silta. She's with Freedom LA. And I shot this in studio a couple months ago um, on film and absolutely loved her. I love the movement and energy. Um, this one, I think I just told her to go crazy and she kind of went crazy and I captured it. <laughs> this is older. This is a reflection pool um, that I shot probably in 2014, I want to say. And the model in it is Faith Pacozzi, but you cannot see her. Um, I think I saw this reflection just from the other side of the pool and I, I, had, to, I had to grab it. This is Sesson. This is some of the digital stuff I did at the flowers that I was mentioning earlier. Um, and this is the place where we were at. This is what the view was. The flowers were behind us, but this was literally what we were looking at. It was like what dreams are made of. Sometimes you don't realize that this is California and that you can get to these places within 30 to 45 minutes from LA. It's just bizarre. But so glad I took her here. It was a very, very steep climb too. It was not easy, but we did it. <laughs> this is looking up at Sesson. Um, the, the, the expansiveness and the negative space really um, draws me in. I loved it. This is the Flower Hill and she is climbing up in this one and I'm just blown away by the flowers, to be honest. They were so insane. They're all dead by now, but if we get a rainy next year, it might be pretty cool. Um, this one I love. I just love the way she looks and she feels so free. And I like almost all of my pictures, it just kind of happens this way and I didn't really try to direct her too much but I'm like hey just go stand there and you know just be yourself and then this is what happens I love this one this one's one of my favorites um I love her smile I love how she looks like she's so freaking happy and I just love the way the flowers are all surrounding her there's something about it that I just I cannot 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 get over um Ah, it's so good. I want to keep looking at it. Sorry. <laughs> this is Sadie Newman. 
Um, this is around that same time when I shot the flowers of Sasson. This is, that tree bloomed right after all that rain we got. Um, and this is like two minutes from my house. I saw it earlier in the day when I was supposed to shoot Sadie. I didn't really have like a whole lot of inspiration happening in my head. I was like thinking to myself, oh, what do I do with her? I don't really know. Um, and then I saw this tree and I was like, okay, well, I'm doing that. And then she came over and had this little light pink silk, um, lacy little nightgown looking thing. And I just said, go stand here in the middle of it. And then I, I like got back a little bit and I just said, um, give me, I just said like, get, like try and incorporate some movement and um, move around a little bit so I can see, you know, just what happens. And then this is what happened. And that's her from a different angle. Um, obsessed with these flowers though. I actually saw that tree earlier today and it's all green. There's no flower anywhere. Um, but yeah, she's just kind of in her own moment and I don't really direct a whole lot. I'm just, I usually tell people to stand in one place and, and just kind of move there. Or I'll just say like, here, come in this area or this zone that, that you're in and then just move, move around in this little space. Um, but yeah, that's kind of it. Um, and we're almost to the end. This is an editorial I shot recently for End Paper. It's a magazine um, based out of LA with um, like fashion and art and um, so many talented photographers and models and artists contributed to the last issue. Um, this one in particular, I worked with an art director named Amy Osborne and her and I came up with this little concept called Come Together and we wanted to kind of do a, a piece on women and just the idea of being like close and um, having a bond with another woman and what that feels like. And we, we just, um, I don't know, we, we created this like beautiful little editorial. Um, this is on the, the right with the white sweater is Courtney Money, and then on the left with uh, the brown is Georgie Zimator. They're both with photogenics. And then on the left is Devony, or sorry, Devin, um, and then Courtney Money, and then Georgie on the right. But this is all the same editorial. I love this shot in particular. Um, this is Courtney, and she also goes by Minji. Um, she is she's a really dope model honestly i love this one too with the the color blocking and the orange pants um and it's funny like this shoot actually happened in a way that was super stressful um our location was supposed to be permitted and then we got to the location to start shooting and then they told us we couldn't shoot there so we had to think of something super fast um and luckily amy my art director kind of was like okay we can do this we can do this we can do this so we made it we made it happen and it was i mean it was totally a nightmare in the moment but it all worked out for the best and we came up with this and i think it honestly you wouldn't know just by looking at the photos but it's funny how that happens with images you just like have these experiences and then nobody else knows what's happening while you're taking the photos um but we had a great stylist um kate Riney helped us and it was just such a good shoot, such a good publication, such good models. This is Devin again, Georgie and Courtney. She is so stunning. She is out of this world. Um, but yeah, it's, she's with Freedom. I don't know her last name. All I know is her first name's Devin. Um, and we shot this, I think in the Valley in LA somewhere. And it just kind of happened organically. There wasn't like a whole lot of planning. We definitely had a mood board, but it wasn't so strict and rigid. I mean, a lot of these are come up. Oh, sorry, I can't talk. A lot of these were, um, they, they came up on the fly. This one especially. This actually, I suppose Amy thought of and said, what if we had like some sort of like bullfighting um, idea, like where somebody's trying to push up something like, um, like a bull would like, um, basically to try and represent like uh, what it feels like to be oppressed or what it feels like to be pushing up against something that's pushing back at you. And we thought this kind of tied into the whole um, 
being a woman and feeling these feelings that, you know, we're all kind of feeling a lot more recently. Um, so there was like a little bit of a political thing or idea behind it. Um, but I think it can translate to almost anything. And that's what's so beautiful, I think, to me about it is that it means something to most people, but then somebody else could think of something completely different. So, I mean, it's, it's all subjective. I guess all art is. And this is a little sneak peek of something I've shot recently. And it's not out yet, but I'm really, really excited for when it does. Um, this woman is named May. She's with Next. And we shot this one um, for an editorial for Awkward World magazine. And they're going to be coming out with it in September. Can't really show you the rest, but I think it's pretty cool. We shot this outside actually on a super windy day. And my seamless was blowing around in the background. It was really hard, but... We made it all work and I'm really stoked on it. I don't, I don't know. But this one, I think I just told her like bend backwards and then it just kind of like happened like that. And then this last one I shot recently in Miami. Um, this was for that Intimates line that I work with called Lively. This is their swim launch they did. Um, and it was really hot there. It was, it was blazing, but it was beautiful. And this model, I forget her name, honestly. That's horrible of me. It's so hard to remember these things when you're on job. So um, I've forgotten her name, but this is one of my favorite images. I don't think the brand actually used this photo, which is a shame, but they all have their own ideas about you know what they want to sell. But I personally think this one was one of the bangers. Um, I love the color of the blue and um, just the lines and like the composition of it seemed really nice with them, the shape of her arms. And um, yeah, that's kind of, that's kind of it. Wow. I've been talking for a really long time. <laughs> no, that was super Oh cool. my God. <laughs> that actually went by really quick. Wow. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a few questions that we'll just, try to jump into and then I think okay. we can kind of wind down after that. But um, well, first off, there's just a nice comment that says, hi Kayla, love your work. You have such a great eye for capturing and bringing to light the multifaceted emotions of women. I'm truly inspired by you. Congrats on your engagement. Even Aww. though that was like, it's been engaged for almost three years. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's really sweet though, wow. Yeah. And a couple cues. So we have, you make stunning images and they are, are a result of good communication you have with your models. How long did it take you to get that level where you know how to communicate to get them to kind of do what you want to do? I would say that um, the communication aspect kind of, there's a little bit of an echo. Is it, is my headphones? Yeah, should be good now. Oh, okay. Um, I think the, the good communication comes with like practice and time. It definitely isn't like super easy to just like pick up immediately. Um, when I was about 18 or 19, when I tried to go to art school, I was really not good. I was like experimenting a lot. And I don't think that I necessarily was able to communicate my ideas or my vision very well. Um, not not only did I have trouble getting models that were really, really good, but I also sometimes had results that didn't necessarily, they didn't like incorporate what I thought I was trying to project. And I think over time you just get better at it because you're practicing more and you are creating mood boards. And when you have a good team, you can create things that you can't just by yourself. I would say it took, many years of learning how to communicate. And I would say in the past four years, I've gotten much better at it. But before that I struggled and I still struggle from time to time. Everybody does, but like you just get better at it. Another question we have here, which you kind of went over this throughout the course of your speaking, but just, mm -hmm. I guess, to cover it real quick. How would you describe your creative process? Where do you get the ideas for your photo shoots? Okay, so my creative process, I think, is kind of all over the place. It doesn't necessarily have a rhyme or reason, um, but it usually starts with a model. I like to 
or like a location. If I have a model and a location figured out, I feel like I can pretty much conquer anything. Um, and so I kind of try to start with that just so it's like you have your good base down, you know, those are covered. Um, and models usually spark ideas for me because somebody can really fit a certain vibe or a concept really well compared to others. Um, and I would say from there, I just kind of like create mood boards. And then there's always the like logistical stuff of trying to find the team. And then you might like find an idea, but then it might not work. And it's, you, you have to go back and figure things out constantly. And it's, mine's all over the place. I have no like correct way. And I, I don't necessarily get ideas from thin air. I think you have to like really know what you want and has to be precise but sometimes sometimes things do just pop into your head I think trying to force yourself to find inspiration is very difficult and it actually can backfire sometimes cool this is actually a Facebook question from I believe his name is let's see here we have Z Kirk I'm gonna go with that I think that's how you pronounce it and he says do you have any tips for scouting local models when you live in a small city and don't have connections to agencies? Ah, find people on the street. Honestly, if you find somebody on the street that you really, really like and you walk by them and you think, oh my God, they're stunning or they would look really cool and you have a camera on you, can, I mean, do you, would you feel comfortable saying like, hey, can I shoot you? Because I used to do that. I swear, I, I was the weird person that was like, can I shoot your photograph? But I was also like, a young girl and kind of like silly looking. So I don't know if people thought that I was menacing or a threat, but I don't know. It depends. I would honestly go up to somebody, but it just depends on the type of person you are. If you're comfortable with that, I would say go for it and just start street casting because then you can, you can find people that way. Instead of going through agencies when you're a in a small town that probably doesn't have good agencies and B, if you're just starting out, you don't really have like the sort of, like uh you don't have that pull with agencies it's like it's hard to get your name in there and have them send you good packages i would say just find people on the street honestly <laughs> in here which it asks the question is your approach to photographing women different than photographing men and first off do you even really photograph <laughs> men too often no that's something I don't really do and I don't actually enjoy shooting men as much as I do women I mean if there's a man and a woman together I feel like it makes a lot of sense and like I vibe with that but when it's just a man there's something that happens within me and I don't I don't connect as well like I connect with men on a day-to-day -day basis when we're talking, like, that's fine. But when the camera gets in front of me, I can't go, oh my God, you're so beautiful. You're so stunning. Like move your hair and like move your body. I want to see like the sensuality and like the motion in you. Like that just doesn't happen with me for men. And with women, there's like this instant connection and this instant way of like getting on another person's level with men. I feel like I have to really try. And that kind of takes the fun out of it for me, if, uh, the connection not being there, you know, like it just, it's not as inspiring. There are a few guys though. I'd, I'd say they have to be pretty feminine um, to be, to want me to photograph them, I'd say. <laughs>